And welcome to the Manny Diaz Show for 2021. Joe Zagecki with Don Bailey Jr., University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz, joins us momentarily. What a terrific way to start the season in Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, two of the classic brands in college football, Miami and Alabama, number one against number 14, Don. Alabama, the defending champs, and the longest winning streak in the nation. It's going to be a fun one, Joe, but no way can you think that you're going to go into this football game without Miami busting at the seams. It's going to be a high-energy football game. There are going to be a ton of fans there, a ton of hurricanes in place, and let's go Canes. The biggest question for Miami going into training camp was quarterback De'Ara King. I think he erased all of the question marks during camp. He threw the ball with accuracy. He ran with authority. If you did not know what happened to Derek King, you would never suspect that he had a knee injury. He looked ahead of schedule day one. He never took a practice off. He never took a rep off. He's able to run. He's able to move. He's able to throw. And that's going to carry over into this football game. Miami and Alabama at Mercedes-Benz Stadium, a 3.30 kickoff, number one and number 14. We'll talk about it with Manny Diaz when we continue right after this. And welcome to the Manny Diaz Show, everybody, for 2021. Joe Zagacki alongside my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., and University of Miami head coach, Manny, Manny Diaz. Diaz. What, what a, a robust, robust way, way to start, start off the 2021 season. Miami and Alabama in Atlanta. Coach, welcome to the show. Well, to your show, but uh, great to see you once again. And as I said, what a great way to start the season. Yeah, uh, we're all excited. Uh, great to be back amongst fans. You know, and just for everything we went through a year ago, um, we're right back in the middle of it. It's college football at its best, you know, two great programs, tr uh, two great traditions uh, in a great venue. Coach, we've been out of practice and I've really enjoyed the intensity. I've enjoyed the energy and it, it looks like this Miami team has stepped up another level. A lot of that has to do with experience, but they're very well conditioned as well. Yeah, I think Dave Feely did a great job in the summer, as he always does. Um, but to your point, um, the age that we have, the experience that we have, and the depth that we have allows us to practice harder because we have more, we have more groups that can function, to be quite honest. You know, your twos, there's not as big of a drop-off between the twos and the ones, and that just that increases everybody's competition level, and guys are worried about their jobs and worried about playing time, and it's made every day, uh, you know, highly competitive. There were a set of new national guidelines. Did that affect training camp in any way, or what kind of impact did it have on camp? Small, if any, um, you know, we, we, you know, you can only scrimmage twice now, you know, a certain amount of days we can be in, in full pads as opposed to just helmets. Um, it's been going that way now for the last few years. Um, you, you know, you hardly even get a chance to get 25 days in the 29 opportunities that you have to practice. So, uh, but everybody's kind of living under the same rules right now and, uh, and we're now in game week mode or ready to go. But Manny, with those rules, the off season becomes even more important because when I first saw the rules, I go, oh my goodness, again, they're going to take t time away. But the young men are conditioned and it seems that, you know, strength wise, that they're where they should be. And I guess the off season really now is a huge focus. Yeah, the off season, not just for the conditioning level, but you know, that you are allowed to have meetings, football meetings in the off season. Um, that's really big because training camp now goes so fast. I mean, you basically have two weeks to really determine who your team is, and then you really get into game prep after that. So, um, if you you know if, if you come into training camp trying to learn what to do, it's going to be tough. I and mean, you really have to know mentally what to do beforehand so you can try to compete over two weeks at a high level. Is it fair to say one of the great stories in camp was De'Ara King, the way he responded, the way he played, the the leadership, the inspiration that he showed? I don't think anybody knew. I'm not sure Derek knew. Um, what he would be like in training camp. We all knew day one he would be cleared, but you know, what does cleared mean? Does that mean he can you know, get some reps? I mean, is, that, is he just gonna throw? How is he gonna move around? And he, um, he showed everybody from day one that um, the Derek we knew from a year ago was back, maybe better. And really, Manny, it's easy to believe because the way that he has attacked his rehab and, and Dr. Kaplan at U Health and Vinny Scavo and DJ, the training room and the strength and conditioning, I don't know that I ever remember a young man going at it as hard as he did. And I think he showed up uh, the day after the bowl game and was in here 
preparing himself in rehab. It was. It was. We came right back after the bowl, and that's when he had the MRI and, and the surgery right thereafter. And um, I'm not, not even sure he went home for the you know the, the break, the holiday break after the bowl game, and just got jumped right back into the rehab. And that's the Eric. You know, that's how he attacks anything. Um, and I think the team took great notice to that and I think it inspired everybody. I was going to say that has to have an impact on your team right when your leader becomes your hardest worker but also he's coming off a serious injury for football to see the the work ethic that he put in to get to be able to be ready for the start of the season got to be a great example for the players. Yeah I think we really they knew who Derek was a year ago but this now full calendar year remember last year we went away for three months we were all in quarantine um, so we learned who Derek was through the season. You know, I think the guys know this guy. Now they know what makes him special because really, you know, what drives him and his inner, his, you know, inner motivation to, to be great has been on display from the day we got back from Orlando. Man, he's affected the whole team, but let's hone in a little bit. The quarterback room itself, how much are those young guys benefiting by being in a room with Derek every single day and just watching how he prepares. Yeah, it is like having a coach in the room. You know, Rhett Lashley, of course, has done a phenomenal job of just, you know, setting the tone for all those guys in that room. But uh, when you come to work every day with a, with a pro, you know, it's really what Derek is and, and the way he handles anything, the way he thinks about the game. Uh, to be honest, it's what the, you should have in your quarterback room. And, and, and we, we were lacking that for a while. and. Derek's brought us back, and, and now having Tyler and Jake be able to learn um, under him, you know, what a great benefit to them, and, and that'll help us in years to come. You know, uh, one of the things you've been able to do as head coach, you've been a problem solver. You fix uh, special teams, you got a lot of competition this year, wide receiver. Now you took over defense again, uh, calling the defensive signals. How'd that work out for you in training camp, and, and you know, what led to that decision? In training camp, it was fun. You know, yeah. it's fun to get back in there and, and compete again. And, um, but I, I didn't do it for fun. I didn't do it for any personal reasons. I, what, what I saw is that we, we, we needed accountability, and, and we had lost some trust on the defense side of the ball. And, and, um, and I just didn't think that, you know, other, other than the head coach, I don't know how you could have more accountability than if the head coach um, took control of the defense. And so um, I think the guys have done a good job of, of – of rebuilding the, what it takes to play great defense. And defense is all about the connections of the individuals that are out there. Um, I think we're a more connected defense than we were a year ago, and we'll have to be because obviously we have a great opponent to start the season with. A big help for you too, Manny, has to be your fourth and fifth year and the guys and six-year guy. Um, had you as their defensive coordinator before you became the head coach here at the University of Miami, so they can translate to the younger players, and there's no question they know what you expect. Yeah, well, and they've seen it, right? So they, they, they've seen it when we were really good right. defensively. And, and then, um, you know, the players in the locker room, they always know. And, and, and they know some of the things that, that cost us a year ago. Um, so they get it, you know. And, 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 and great players, they, they, they want to be pushed hard. They want to be held to a high standard. Um, but what, what, what really helps is, is having a great staff. And I, I think the defense coaches that we have in right now, um, they've all fit in really nicely together. I think the players have really taken to them very well, and, and so I think that's really helped, um, you know, helped us sort of rebuild the Miami defense as well. You know, you're talking about that uh, in the depth on defense. You were able to make some, I thought, pretty strategic moves. Amari Carter going down to striker to compete with Frierson, Keontre Smith moving over to linebacker, but they're also look like yet inter those guys could be interchangeable parts. But you've got uh, some punishing hitters on the field that can run. Yeah, we. Uh, that's. that's it's not a hard game, right? Get some guys that can run and hit um, out there. And I do feel like we've increased the team speed of our defense, which, um, which I thought was lacking at times a little bit. And, and as we know, this is what Miami invented, right? I mean, just 4-3 defense with dominating line play and linebackers that can fly. Um, and we lost a little bit of that a year ago. Um, and the other part is just trying to get our best 11 guys on the field, you know? And, you know, obviously bringing back guys like, you know, when you had Gervin and Bubba in the back end with a guy like Amari, you know, how, how can we play the three of them on the field at once? Um, Frierson still provides great value that allows Carter to still help us out at safety. Counter Smith going to Will. Um, you know, now you really got speed on both sides of the formation. So, you know, when, when a defense is fast, things that are open don't stay open for very long because, you know, guys can rally the ball. And uh, I like where we've, I like how we've um, made progress there. Coach, last year, two defensive ends. You had 
Quincy Roche, of course, and then Jalen, number one draft pick in the National Football League with the Miami Dolphins. But really, you go back numerous years, you've had a lot of production from that defensive end spot as far as the sack totals go. How do you plan on manufacturing that this year? Yeah, the way we have normally done. As you know, this time last year, no one knew what we had in Jalen Phillips and, and Quincy Roche. Um, one, it's about being relentless. Uh, it's about attacking the offense. Um, you know, again, you know, ha having a guy like Just Simpson and, and, and how he teaches pass rush, I think will be a great help. Um, but the best defenses we've had around here is where we've had two deep of guys that can go hard. You know, and I think of the, you know, 2017, the back-to-back -back weeks with Jonathan Garvin being a young guy getting strip sacks against Virginia Tech and Notre Dame. That's your depth, right? And that's what frustrates an offense because as offensive linemen get tired and you've got fresh defensive ends, um, so, yeah, I mean, I mean the, the, the high-end talent like you saw with Jalen a year ago and what he became, um, that can be replaced by, by having four guys that we really like, that we really think can cause offensive linemen trouble. I mentioned at the top of the show, it's a, a robust way to start the season with Alabama. And we can talk more about uh, what makes them so, uh, so tough. But just in general, uh, during training camp, for the players to know that they have a game of this magnitude, was that beneficial? You'd have to say it is, of course, right? I mean, the players, they get it. You know, I mean, the, the, the countdown clock in the weight room, not just in practice, but the whole offseason program. And we, we don't, you know, we got to be rolling from the opening kickoff, right? You don't have a chance to ease into this. We're not going in the shallow end of the pool to start off the, the, our, our swimming. So, um, but to that context, we've really made a big deal all year about it's about Miami. And let's focus on us. Let's focus on us being able to every weekend produce our best performance, regardless of opposition. Um, because I think if we worry about Alabama or if you worry about trying to play perfect or you worry about all these other external things, you're not focusing on what you can control, uh, which ultimately every individual controls his individual performance. If you have a bunch of great individual performances, you have a great team performance. And that's, uh, that's kind of been our battle cry uh, going back since January. Man, and that's not coach speak, because that, that's been taught in this sport since the day it started and you really do have to take it as snap by snap and week by week and day by day and game by game to make sure there is constant improvement in the weight room in the meeting room and on the field yeah what we tell our guys is that usually bad things happen in a game when you make mistakes right mm -hmm. if, we, if we block the wrong guy we miss the protection run the wrong route um, don't fill our gap versus a run don't play a coverage the right way the only thing that the opponent has to do with that is that the better players they have the more they punish you for your mistake. But that's still your mistake, right? So to me, you're still trying to build a team that's hard to beat by limiting, eliminating the mistakes that we make. Now, some guys might have a team where they can out-execute you, but most games are really won by who makes the more mistakes or who makes the fewer mistakes. And, and I think our guys, have, uh, they've, understand, they've understood that. And, and uh, you know, yeah, Alabama's got great players, and if, if you're not where you're supposed to be, they can punish you. But we can control being where we're supposed to be. It is Miami and Alabama Saturday. That's how Miami will kick the season off. 3.30 kickoff at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We'll talk more with University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz right after this. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the Miami Hurricanes are going to show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Greek Moving and Storage is the team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget locally or nationwide. And now, Good Greek is the official mover of the Miami Hurricanes. Let Good Greek be your official mover, too. Good Greek moving and storage. Your superhero movers. Experience a winning combination at Williamson Cadillac with a streamlined car buying experience and an unmatched lineup of Cadillacs. From the unmistakable crossover series to the performance of our sedans, plus the original icon, the Cadillac Escalade. Williamson is Miami. Happy to welcome you back to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki, Don Bailey Jr., and University of Miami head coach Manny Diaz. Hurricanes in Alabama on Saturday at 3.30 from Mercedes-Benz Stadium. We touched on uh, De'Ara King, but also the continuity. How about the continuity with Rhett Lashley, year number two? Not only with De'Ara, but also with the offense in general. Huge. Uh, the, the whole offensive coaching staff, uh, when you consider again, 2020, we just forget. You know, you didn't even have an offseason. Um, half of training camp didn't even know we were going to play a season. So just to, to get around um, to those guys that spent a whole year with our coaching staff, 
um, to get to the details of the offensive system. When we, when we look back at where we were a year ago, we were still learning what to do halfway through the season. So uh, we think we're in a different spot. We expect um, a lot of improvement on offense, which is exciting. Cause we Obviously, we made a big jump a year ago, and, uh, but I think everyone in this building expects us to make another big jump this year. Coach, let's jump to the tight end spot. Will Mallory looked outstanding in the last scrimmage, but this is a guy that uh, worked through spring, was at, wasn't out at spring, got healthy, got bigger, stronger, and he really got faster. I mean, he looks like he can run as fast as I've ever seen him go. Yeah, Will is scary. He's always been fast, but, you know, he came here, he was around 200 pounds, maybe 210. And to see him now at 250, uh, I think he ran 21.7 the other day miles per hour, that is getting it for a big man. That's getting it for any man. Um, but for a guy his size, um, gives you a great weapon so he can be explosive. But his catch radius, you know, and, and his strength now, really getting to understand his body and, and, and how to use that to uh, manipulate defenders, he, he, is a, he is a matchup problem. On that same position, when I first saw Arroyo, I was like, well, wait a minute, who is that guy? Because you talk about being big, I mean, he's only a freshman and he's a big, big kid. Yeah, Elijah. <laughs> and Will together look like, like NFL dudes. They, they look like old tight ends. And uh, I think what's been impressive with, with Elijah has is, is been, for a young guy, he runs routes like an older guy. I mean, I mean he looks like, I mean, he has the ability, again, to body off defenders, um, nudge guys out of the way, and just use his size. There are some guys that are big that don't play big, and Arroyo plays big, you know. And, and when you have guys like that for a quarterback, um, they can be covered and still be open. Because they're so big, and they just they always provide an outlet for the QB to go with the ball. Coach, going to the season with the second most starts, I believe, in the country on the offensive line. Uh, you've got your captain from last year, uh, Corey Gaynor, who's who orchestrates that deal. But overall, that unit under Garen Justice has improved day after day. They have, and and you mentioned continuity again. You know, having Coach Justice back with them and the same scheme and. Um, just to be able to improve on where they were a year ago instead of to rebuild it all over again. Um, we're old, as you mentioned, you know, and these guys were, were young for a while and had to take some lumps and learn on-the-job training, which is tough as an offensive lineman. Um, so to see them um, and where their confidence level is, um, to see a guy like Navon Donaldson come back in the lineup, to see a young guy like Jalen Rivers really make big strides, um, the depth, they've all pushed each other to really become better. And I think that's been the, the thing that they all saw in the spring and in training camp is, wow, like we are all improving because every day we are all competing for playing time. Coach, what are the, the metrics that you hit on now in college football? You look at some of these teams on offense, it's uh, 500 yards and 40 points a game. Alabama didn't win the national championship a year ago. They gave up 360 yards a game. So uh, offense... I know you're a defensive guy, but offense right now is holding the upper hand. Yeah, anyone who still uses yards per game as a stat is kind of <laughs> <laughs> like living in past, you know, times. Um, you know, I've, I've said this a bunch of times. It's like it's like a baseball game that if they made baseball from 12 innings instead of nine, guess what? People would have more RBIs and more home runs and score more runs. There's just more opportunities. Um, but the metrics we use are still yards per play. Mm -hmm. uh, that matters because the ball's still only being snapped so many times. Um, I mean, whoever would have thought that you'd see an SEC championship game a year ago where the score was 52 to 46. Um, but that's the world that we do live in now. It, it is so defensively, uh, the more things change, the more they stay the same, though. I mean, you still have to be great against the run. Um, you've got to be great in the red zone because people, people can move the ball between the 20s, but you've got to be great in the red zone. You got to be great at limiting explosive touchdowns, right? People can get them some yards, but again, they can't get explosive touchdowns. That's what keeps the score down. You got to create turnovers. Um, you do those things and win on third down. You can still hold people. And we always say the only thing we want to do defensively at Miami is we want to lead the nation in wins. That's a stat that counts the most. And we have a formula that we think helps the offense win football games, the team win football games. Coach Bubba Bolden decided to come back, and he is a guy that. Uh, every day that I was at practice and every opportunity I got to watch him, it, it seems that his energy level has jumped up a notch, but also his stamina. You know, it's one thing to, to, to go hard one play, but he's going hard every play. Yeah, Bubba um, came back a different guy this year, um, uh, dedicated himself in the weight room at, at a, a level beyond what he had. It was good before, but just at a level beyond. Saw the transformation in his body. 
Um, he's carrying more weight now, which make him more physical, better tackler. Um, but I think Bubba just realized, I, I, you know, he, he, he took a hard look at his game. He did a lot of really good things a year ago. Um, we made him tackle too often. Too many times we let the ball break out to him. Um, but he knows what, where he can make some improvements. Um, he's highly motivated. He's highly intelligent. Really mm-hmm. understands the game, understands everybody's job around him. He makes guys around him better. And, and as you mentioned, I think his, his now comfort level of asserting himself as a leader in the back end of our secondary um, is crucial to our success. We uh, probably should mention in this recruiting class, you had uh, James Williams, best defensive player in, in Broward, and uh, Leonard Taylor, the best defensive player in Dade, and then three receivers, two from Dade and one from Broward, that were the cream of the crop, and it looked like they had a pretty good camp. They all have. Um, we've, we've been really excited about this recruiting class uh, coming in. Um, They've all had a chance to compete, show what they can do. Every one of those guys has shown why we recruited them and, and, and the accolades that they got coming out. Um, now they're all still learning, right? And, you know, what we always say, their roles will grow during the season. Sometimes some guys will pop first, some guys pop a little bit later, you know. Um, but we, we keep working with those guys, keep training those guys. And, and, and the best thing is, you mentioned like Bubba Bolden. James Williams gets to see Bubba Bolden work every day in practice. You know, Leonard Taylor gets to watch, you know, John Ford and, and Nessa Silvera and Jared Harrison Hunt and Jordan Miller. He's got four old, experienced guys in front of them that can show them how to practice every day. The wideouts get to watch a guy like Mike mm-hmm. Harley go to work. So um, we didn't have that when Mike Harley came in the program. You know, we didn't have that when John Ford came in the program. So um, it's great that the older guys can really mentor those younger guys and show them, you know, how, hey, I was you once. I was a highly recruited guy that came in, and here's how you got to take the steps now. To, to put that into productivity in college. And coach, you talk about players being unselfish and, and a commitment to this program. Mike Harley's a perfect example. Every time you talk to him, he one of the reasons, our main reasons he came back was to make the program better and to teach that room how to be a professional. And it pays off. And you, every time you see him, there's nobody that works harder. There's nobody that spends more time here than him, but he's doing it as a mentor. Yeah, Mike, uh, Mike had a different level somewhere during last year and, and he's carried it through this year and I think they get it I, I think Mike Harley w- probably wonders gosh what would it what would my career have been like if I'd had a guy like this to teach me you know what it was like and um, so it's it's just one of the great benefits of our program of having some age and experience where guys can give back they can be mentors to the younger players and they don't make us the Mike Harleys won't just make us better this year they'll make us better next year and the years to come because of the influence that they've had on these younger guys. Coach Alabama, the defending champs, they bring back just about their entire defense. They all look like they're a cut out of a football catalog for each position. Uh, looks like they've just profiled size and weight in each position, but uh, defensively, you would have to expect them to, to be really good and really physical. Yeah, they'll be outstanding on defense. Uh, they always are. Um, they were a little young in the secondary to start last year. They improved in the back end as the year went on. Uh, but I think the thing that really stands out, maybe a little unique for an Alabama defense, is they are dynamic rushing the passer. Uh, they're not, and they've they've always been excellent. They've not always been dynamic in in, in having those guys that can just really um, be a terror in pass protection. They've got a couple now that that really can cause problems. So, um, got to protect the ball. Got to protect your quarterback. Those are things always in Week One games that are really important. And uh, they probably have the best in the country in guys disruptive um, to try to get after the, your QB. And Coach, you would think that that offense would, would fall quite a bit if you're Alabama, especially when you lose three, guy, three guys that were in the top five and a, uh, for the Heisman and the Heisman winner. But the experience they have at running back, the experience that they have on the offensive line, they've got a, a sixth-year center and, and, the, and the left tackle went from right tackle and he's been a starter at guard. It just, they just keep growing it and growing it, but a very powerful and exciting offense with a young, exciting quarterback. Yeah, I'm sure that their expectation is that they won't have any drop-off, you know, which is, you know, they had to replace two first-round wideouts last year and two guys went in there and, and, and both could have won the Heisman a year ago. So, um, you know, that's, that's where their program is at right now. That being said, it's still a new year. Um, guys still have to go out and they have to do it. Um, but, you're, but, you know, look, I mean, you're going to play four to five classes of, of high, high end a level elite recruiting. Um, but they can only put 11 guys out there at a time. So I, I think our guys relish the challenge. A lot of our guys, 
know some of their guys, you know, through the camp circuit or through high school football, and I think our guys will be excited to go play against them. Coach, what are your thoughts on the one constant there has been Nick Saban in kind of revolving door in other areas, but what are your thoughts on his impact on college football? It is um, it's really hard to sustain success. Um, it's, it's really hard to get to the top. It's really, really hard to stay there. And, and if you look at it historically, um, the programs that have certainly, you know, obviously the run that we know that happened here, um, um, you know, Florida State went on that run 15 years, finishing the top four. It's just, it's just very difficult because you got to, you know, complacency sets in, ego sets in, selfishness sets in. It's hard to keep staffs, things like that. So certainly the way that they've been able to sustain, um, change, adapt, you know, obviously, you know, to go from a team that was built to beat you with defense and, and just controlling the ball on offense to now where they're scoring truckloads of points on offense, you know. So, I mean, I think all that um, is why they are where they are. Um, and so, you know, here we go. We start another season and we see how it goes. Coach, let's not make any mistake. All these Miami football players are going to get on that plane. They're going there to win a football game. They're going there to, to make sure that they represent this university, that they represent themselves on this football team. And, yes, Alabama's had a great run, but Miami's going to run out on that field, and they are going to go try and do everything they can to win a football game, and they've worked for it. Yeah, and, and as a competitor, you wouldn't have any doubt that, that, that you're going to win the football game. That's just, that's just how it works. That's how competitors work. I mean, I don't know if people always understand that on the outside, but um, no one's going there just to, to get their picture taken, you know? I mean, so um, there is a clear and concise way on how to win the football game. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but there is a clear and concise pathway to victory. There always is every week the same way. There's always, regardless of opposition, a clear and concise way to get your butt beat every week. And I don't know that we always understand that. Every week there's a way to get yourself beat. In every way there's a way to win a football game. And so um, the team that follows the plan the best on how to win the football game is going to have a great chance to win it, regardless of what uniform they're wearing or what they're ranked. I think it's going to be great. Two of the most iconic brands in college football playing in a beautiful stadium. Biggest crowd in college football since last year, that's for sure. Uh, to kick things off, so it should be a wild night, wild afternoon. Yeah, I, I, I think that's an underrated storyline. Um, you know, running out of that tunnel, and I'm sure they're going to be the same way. I, I know they play in that stadium once a year, but after what we all went through a year ago, to get back into a, a, a rocking environment like what that's going to be, and neutral site games, we all know, I mean, every play, half the stadium's going crazy. We know how their fans, I, I mean, I was, I remember being in the Sugar Bowl in 1992 and, you know, the little Miami section and, and the whole place was for, you know, Alabama. Um, we're going to have to, both teams are going to have to manage the atmosphere um, because it's just not the same. It's, it's not. I mean, it would, it would be difficult in a normal situation, but after what we've been through a year ago and playing in front of one eighth, one quarter, one whatever full stadiums, um, I think fans, broadcasters, I think everyone alike is going to be a little juiced up uh, when that opening kickoff comes around. I'm not ready to come out of my chair. Okay, we got much more to come on the show. Stay with us as we continue with Manny Diaz right after this. Experience a winning combination at Williamson Cadillac with a streamlined car buying experience and an unmatched lineup of Cadillacs. From the unmistakable crossover series to the performance of our sedans, plus the original icon, the Cadillac Escalade. Williamson is Miami. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the Miami Hurricanes are gonna show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Greek Moving and Storage is the team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now Good Greek is the official mover of the Miami Hurricanes. Let Good Greek be your official mover too. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. The Breakdown is brought to you by University of Miami Sports Medicine Institute. Experts treat athletes of all levels, elite pros, active adults, and youth athletes. Recover your game. Visit youthsportsmedicine.com. It's time for the Breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. And coach, let's talk a little special teams. In season openers, special teams are always really important. Uh, we know the rules and limited time on scrimmaging and doing things live and um, the timing of live games is sometimes different than what you get in practice. And so, uh, boy, you feel really good when you've got great specialists. And uh, we feel really good because we got some great ones. 
All right, Coach, when you, when you go into the to punt formation, being a guy that used to have to do that long snap, that is where it starts, right? That, that, if yeah. that long snap's there, you see that in the NFL now through college. They're recruiting guys specifically for that. We've been fortunate to have Clay there for the last few years. Yeah, Clay James has been phenomenal. So, when, when you know, last year we led the nation in net punt and set an NCAA record for net punt of all time. That's all time you're talking about. And that does start with a perfect snap because, you know, we all know Lou is very talented, but to know that that snap is automatic, you know, and you see how right here with the ball, bang, look, look how it hits, I mean, Louie right in the numbers, perfect. And then he can work on his footwork and get that ball out of there, a the little rugby style where he rolls out to the right. And now the situation, so here's where you talk about how important it is. Ball, you're punting from inside your own 20. Lou bombs it out of there. Now you take great effort. Look at some of the players we have screaming down the field. That's to Corey Couch coming from the bottom of the field. That's Gervin Hall coming from the top of the field. And, and the guy catches the ball going backwards. We just went 20 to 20. That's a 60-yard ch uh, change in field position. And, again, if you average 40 yards on a net punt, that's phenomenal. So that's pitch starting at their own 20 as opposed to starting their own 40. That is worth points. Like the, the data people will tell you, that is, that is, there's a point differential in terms of what it means to start on your own 20 and your own 40. That's Headley's impact on our team. Coach, you have put so much emphasis on your special teams. You, you employ starters and encourage it, and now there, there, there's a competition to get on That's right. the special well, teams. What we always say is right now, as soon as that ball goes off Louis Headley's foot, we're playing defense. They know special teams. We're playing defense, right? <laughs> right. They, they, they have the ball, and we got some guys that got to go down there and get them. So same thing. Look at, I mean, look at the ball. So these are these situations. You're backed up inside your own 20-yard line. They think they're going to get the ball in positive field position. And to make the guy go backwards again, get that ball inside the 30-yard line to Corey Couch, again, the first guy down the field. These are, these are momentum plays in a game where people think, ah, it's just, you know, we punt them the ball. These are big downs. Coach, go over some of the alignment. You have it there, and it's spread punt isn't what it used to be. You, there's new alignments now. There's new ways to get guys free at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Jonathan Packey and, and Danny Calton do a great job with our special teams. They're very creative. We can present different formations. Um, you know, the rules in college football because, you know, in the NFL, the guys, only the, the two outside guys can go down and cover until the ball is, hits a foot in college. Everybody can release. So you'll even see, like, Clay James, he's out as soon as the ball is released. We're trying to get the, the two missiles at the bottom of the screen try to get those guys out right there so they can get out quick, try to change up the look so, you know, you can protect the punter, give Louie a nice clean pocket like he's got right there. Um, but, again, watch, watch what Louie does because he can directionally punt as well. So same thing. So we're punting from inside our 30, and watch what he does. He takes the ball and puts it outside the numbers. Out of, you know, talk about like a golf shot? <laughs> like this isn't like a, a perfect shot, boink. Knocks it on, goes right. I mean, you couldn't ask for it better because now look at the coverage. The guy, he has not a chance. Very frustrating for the punt catcher. And again, there's another drive starting inside their 20-yard line against Miami. All right, now the trick question. How do you manage the minds of, of, the, of a Lou Henley? I mean, he, he, those guys are different. The punters and the kickers and the snappers, they're, they're in a world of their own. How do you manage that to practice and make sure that they're, they're getting the right reps and they're going through the motions, not just going through the motions? Louis phenomenal because Louis highly competitive. He wants to know what's going on with our protection. He, you know, he wants to be the leader and the captain of the punt team. He takes a lot of pride, as do Clay. Um, in this. Sometimes you are around some specials that really are only concerned about themselves. Um, not these two guys. They, they, they feel like they're part of the guys on the team. Uh, Louis takes great pride in it. And I think the players know. So, like, look at the effort of the guys. And again, and again watch, watch Couch down here just blow by his guy. Look at the strain of the guys coming from the field because they know they've got the best punter in the country. Right. So they want to cover for him. So even right here, so the, the, the guy... Catches the ball, couch, flies by him. But we always say is, if you're going to miss on punt, we want to miss on the outside leg. So what have we done? We've done two things. One, we've cut off the field, right, where there's more grass. And two, we've made the guy stop his feet, where he's not running in a straight line at our defense. So, so couch takes his shot. Even if the go, the guy comes out. Now we've got a net set right there that can close in with three safeties back here in the back end that can close in, make the tackle right there. And again, you look at punting from our 20 and getting the guy on the ground at their 30, that is a 50-yard change in field position. So, Coach, you talked about it early on about the limited tackling and, and the limitations you have physically during camp uh, of special teams. 
what are you thinking when the first punt comes or first kickoff coverage? Because you don't do it live. I yeah. mean, that's the first shot. Well, that's why we drill the heck out of it because you got to be able to tackle in space. And like DeCorey knows right here, just a little bit high on his target where the shoulder meets the waist instead of the shoulder to the thigh board of the tackle. But that's why you pursue. That's why you have guys run the football because the pursuit makes up for it. That is, by the way, who making the tackle? That's Clay James. <laughs> and, and watch with Clay. Clay works. We call this a scallop. So see how he kind of how he comes out of his run gets his body in balance. See how he's got the near toe and the near knee forward? That's, all of that is coached. That's all drilled. Uh, Clay goes through our tackle circuit on defense every week and makes a great tackle, rolls on his back, and then there's a pursuit finishing up with, the, uh, I think it's Sam Brooks there at the end. Now, these are just a couple of great examples of, of just coverage as well. And again, we're presenting some different things with motion. Guys are making sure we know who to block. And again, just just... So look where the punt is. So we are, again, directionally punting so that all this field right there is taken away by Headley's phenomenal punt. And then here's, again, Couch in that same situation. This time, Bang wraps the legs up. See how he rolls on his back, which secures the tackle. Just phenomenal. But again, the net is coming right behind. This is going to be really important. As we know, Alabama is a great defense. Punting sometimes is going to be a good play. You know, punting is not always a bad play, especially when you got a great punter that can flip the field. Now it's up to the defense to go out there and get a three and out and get the ball. What you want to talk about is exchanging punts. If we punt to them and get 50 yards on that and get a three and out, and they punt it back to us and get 40 yards on it, well, we, that's, that's a 10-yard gain on offense, right? We're getting closer to the goal line that we're attacking, and that is where special teams, we call that hidden yardage, right? That's where that hidden yardage comes in so important. And then the last one right here, just a great example of a net. So same thing, boom, Louis gets it out. He gets a lot of pressure, okay? Gets the guy to catch the ball. And see how even a small thing right here. See how the punt catcher catches the ball at the 16 but then takes three steps backwards? That's crucial because every step backwards is another step forward for the guy sprinting down the field. So our punt catchers, we coach them all the time. We don't want to catch the ball like this. That just helps out the coverage team. And then now we get them going sideways. We always talk about we want to take away the, the wide side of the field, as I mentioned. But look, we've got a great net set up right here of guys that have, that have fanned out to the field. Look at where no matter where he wants to go, he zigzags, whatever, there's nowhere to go. Great effort right there. A guy, guy gets knocked down, but watch, he just pops straight up off the ground as if it was nothing. Look, look at the pursuit. Man, guy, that's like three or four guys hitting the guy inside the six-yard line. So, again, a punt. They punt it from our own 30, and now all of a sudden you got someone backed up at the six-yard line. So to me, these are the things that could be the determining factors in a game. Normally they are, um, and we feel really good that that's an advantage for us with the weapon that we have in Lou Headley. All right, Coach, one quick question. Hang time. Educate us on that. What's the right number? Yeah. Usually anything over four point is, is great. We've had some with Louie that, that have been above four or five into the fives. It's crazy. Um, so we talk about hang time. There's, there's operation time, right? you got to get the ball out quick. Um, there's hang time and then there's, and there's direction. You know, we, we try not to punt the ball smack down the middle of the field. Um, we want to try to only have to cover half the field if we possibly can. And, and uh, Louis Louis special. He's been phenomenal. All right, that was a breakdown segment with head coach Manny Diaz. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the Miami Hurricanes are going to show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Greek Moving and Storage is the team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now, Good Greek is the official mover of the Miami Hurricanes. Let Good Greek be your official mover, too. Good Greek, moving in storage, your superhero movers. Experience a winning combination at Williamson Cadillac with a streamlined car buying experience and an unmatched lineup of Cadillacs. From the unmistakable crossover series to the performance of our sedans, plus the original icon, the Cadillac Escalade. Williamson is Miami. The joint chiropractic adjustment of the game. A year ago, Miami at Louisville. See Mike Carley going in motion right to left and the Hurricanes with some misdirection. Come back to the near side and Cameron Harris out in front of the pack and Harris, one man to beat, somersaults into the end zone for a Miami touchdown. Harley goes in motion. Hurricanes do a great job of walling everybody off and that sends Cameron Harris off to the races in our joint 
chiropractic adjustment of the game. All right, welcome back to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey Jr. Miami and Alabama this week, Don. And at the top of the list here for our discussion, fans are back to college football, all the pageantry and all the pizzazz. That should be fun. Well, that's what college football is. When you think about it, if you're a Miami fan, you want to see the Hurricanes run through the smoke. You want to hear the excitement. You want to hear the applause. You want to hear the feet stomping and the energy that it produces on the football field. I think you're going to see it raised this year. You know, if you're fortunate enough to go to a game last year, you, you, you witnessed uh, 20,000, 25,000 on the road. It was even less some time for our Hurricanes, but now on a full house, all that energy, I think it's going to be difficult for some of these guys not to hyperventilate. Manny Diaz takes over as defensive coordinator. We'll call the defensive plays as well for the University of Miami. I often think about play calling. One, you're a really good play caller with great personnel. But I do think Coach Diaz is a really good play caller and does an excellent job with the strategy. I think this is going to help the Miami defense. I absolutely believe in it. I've always felt that if you're a head coach, he became a head coach because he was a great defensive coordinator. You were um, Coach Rick when he was at Florida State, got a head coaching job at the University of Georgia because he was a great offensive coordinator. I don't mind these guys calling their plays. They are the experts of the defense. This is his defense. He can explain it better than anybody. He can communicate it better than anyone. But more importantly, he has an answer for every single thing when it comes to this defense. And the biggest thing that they're going to try and do is come up with the takeaway, Joe. That's the biggest part of this defense, and it produces the most energy. No question about that. Okay, on the other side of the ball, the Hurricanes offense, they return just about everybody on offense for the University of Miami. Rhett Lashley uh, calls the plays. Derek King is back. A lot of experience on the offensive line. A lot of experience on the perimeter with the wide receivers. Well, Joe, if you go back and you look at what uh, Rhett Lashley accomplished from year one to year two at SMU, the numbers blew off the charts. I think the same thing is going to happen here. I am so impressed with De'Eric King and how he has recovered from this injury. He is ahead of what he was last year. The communication is better through the entire offense. You've got the second most experienced offensive line in the nation and really the most experienced we've ever had at that position here at the University of Miami. And all of that bodes well for a very, very productive year. And I think you're going to see some great improvement at the wide receiver spot as well. Coach Lashley is a very clever play caller. And by the way, De'Ara King, I don't know if people realize this, but in his career, he's run for nearly 1900, over 1,900 yards. Well, he was the second leading rusher, I believe, at the University of Miami last year. And, and Coach talked about hidden yards in the punting game. I talk about hidden yards out of your quarterback. You go back in time and you look at teams that are very productive. Derek King over 500 yards last year. It's about 50 yards a game, 40, 50 yards a game. But it also constitutes two or three first downs a game that the defense couldn't defend. And I think that's a, that's a blessing for us to have Derek King have that ability to run the football. All right, so the University of Miami has a, a juggernaut in their first game. They are going up against Nick Saban and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Well, they're well documented. Nick, what Nick Saban has done there has been outstanding. He just keeps winning. He keeps duplicating success. They've got everything in their favor. We, are, we will have a bunch of canes there at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. But, Joe, let's talk about the competitive athlete. Everybody on this football field wants to play Alabama. Everybody in this game should want to play Alabama. Is Alabama intimidating? Yeah, I guess they could be, but I don't think they're in, the University of Miami is intimidated. You're, you are a competitor. You want to go out there and compete against the best, and Miami's going to have that chance. i got to give him a ton of credit, Nick Saban, because he's been able to sustain it, like Coach Diaz said earlier. He's been able to sustain a winning edge at Alabama. Other schools, other dynasties have succumbed to either teams being complacent or selfish 
or whatever it might be, that hasn't been the case at Alabama. Well, part of it is is that they have had great quarterbacks through his entire career at Alabama. They've had guys that may not have turned into great NFL quarterbacks, but they were excellent and they executed what needed to be done on for their offense at that time. The other side of it, when you look at Alabama, what he's been able to accomplish is turnover at the coaching positions. He's been able to fill those voids and very rarely miss a step. But this is going to be a great challenge for the University of Miami, and we welcome it. Speaking of quarterback, Bryce Young is their quarterback, number one rated quarterback in the country coming out, number one dual threat quarterback, number one player in the state of California. Yeah, but it's also his number one start. <laughs> and I, I don't care who you are, if it's your first start against a, a Miami defense led by Manny Diaz, Miami's going Miami's to have some tricks ready for him. He's going to have to decipher those defenses. It's going to be a, the fastest game he's ever played in, and there's nobody to really to tap out to. Bryce Young is a guy that came in highly rated, the number one dual threat quarterback coming out of the state of California and in the whole country, that is. But more importantly, he's going to have to find some playmakers as well. They graduated guys out of the backfield, out of the receiver spot, on the offensive line that are going to have an impact. And it's game one for those players as well. Yes, they're talented. Yes, they've won a lot of football games. But it's also start number one for a bunch of those guys on the Crimson Tide. Well, along those lines, he's the only quarterback on their roster that has thrown a college pass. That's nice to know. They've got so, another guy in there, Tyson, who's a, a, a taller, bigger version. But today's game is about quarterbacks being able to move, quarterbacks being able to run, and putting an extra threat on the defense. All right, Alabama's a great pass rushing team. Got Will Anderson on one side, got uh, Allen on the other side. They've got a big defensive line, three-man front, four linebackers. Uh, Toto, Toho, Toho comes in from Tennessee, and they've got an outstanding secondary. Well, Joe, I'm going to start the defensive ends. Good thing for Miami that they had two defensive ends last year that were outstanding. A first round pick and a sixth round pick. The guys are going to have to have some muscle memory because what it was like going against them in practice is what you're going to be going against Alabama on Saturday. Their defensive ends are outstanding. Both of them get up the field. They have a multitude of moves, but more importantly, their power rushers combined with great speed. So that creates a problem. The linebacking core, I think is as good as any that I have seen since the Ray Lewis stays here at the University of Miami. They're, they're that kind of football team at the linebacker spot. And defensive tackle, big, strong, and hard to move. Jordan Battle, outstanding safety on, on, uh, in the deep secondary. They might have the best name in college football at the corner, Cool Aid McKinstry. All right, when we come back, we, uh, we'll take a look at some of the keys of the game as we continue right after this. Experience a winning combination at Williamson Cadillac with a streamlined car buying experience and an unmatched lineup of Cadillacs. From the unmistakable crossover series to the performance of our sedans, plus the original icon, the Cadillac Escalade. Williamson is Miami. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the Miami Hurricanes are going to show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Greek Moving and Storage is the team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now, Good Greek is the official mover of the Miami Hurricanes. Let Good Greek be your official mover, too. Good Greek, moving in storage, your superhero movers. Happy to welcome you back to the Manny Diaz Show. Joe Gacky, Don Bailey Jr. Time now for the keys to the game. And key number one, Don, when you watch Alabama, what jumps out is their physicality on both sides of the ball, running backs lowering their shoulders, linebackers hitting you. Match their physicality, especially in the trenches. Number two, you almost have to play the perfect game. Don't leave anything out on the table. And number three, De'Ara King, got to be king of the hill. Well, let's start with the physicality, Joe. Yes, in the trenches, but also, yes, everywhere. Alabama is physical on the front end, the back end, offense, defense, special teams, and Miami's got to be right there with them every single time. And you go, I'm going to jump right to Derek King. Derek King, he's, I, I want to make sure he comes out of this game healthy. I put the onus on that offensive line. I want to make sure that they understand how to protect him and how to make sure that he has time to throw. And when it's time for Derek King to run, let him run. 
when you get the physicality, tackling becomes important. We talked about play the perfect game. You can't leave points out there on the field. We saw that last year in the bowl game. Miami had several chances to win that game or, or change it. If you got a guy open against Alabama, you've got to make the play. That is true. And it may be a, a three-yard out. It may be a play that is good for 60 or 70 yards. You cannot leave any opportunities on the field. But when you talk about the perfect game as well, I want perfect effort. I want maximum effort out of every single player that is on that field for the University of Miami for the full 60 minutes. They have done a great job conditioning. They're a more of a mature team. They should be ready for that. And you need to play the game where your effort is at the highest level. Derek King, we saw him in training camp. He looked good, 24 years old, playing his starts under his belt. Bryce Young, his first start. I know often quarterbacks don't say it's quarterback against quarterback. But Miami's got to win that matchup. I'll take the 24-year-old who's going into his sixth year, who's been in this game for a long, long time. And more importantly, he has been in big games. Derek King has played against Clemson. He's played against Oklahoma. He's done the things that need to be done to prepare himself for a big game. Physicality, Derek King, be king of the hill, and don't leave anything on the field. Big plays for touchdowns. We'll continue on the Man Idea Show right after this. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the Miami Hurricanes are gonna show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Greek Moving and Storage is the team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now, Good Greek is the official mover of the Miami Hurricanes. Let Good Greek be your official mover too. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. Experience a winning combination at Williamson Cadillac with a streamlined car buying experience and an unmatched lineup of Cadillacs. From the unmistakable crossover series to the performance of our sedans, plus the original icon, the Cadillac Escalade. Williamson is Miami. All right, time to kick off our little game here. We call it Rings and Chains. We've got several subjects to take a look at. If we think it's gonna go offense, we say rings. If we think it's going to go the defensive way, then it becomes chains. So, Joe Zagaki, Don Bailey Jr., we're ready to kick this thing off. And our first question looks like this. The offense rushes for over 200 yards, or the defense allows less than 200 rushing yards. You won the coin toss, Don. You go first. I'm going to take the change, Joe. I know that Miami needs to hold Alabama under 200 yards rushing. I'll even say 100 yards rushing. But how it ended for Miami last year in the running game defensively against North Carolina, that has got to be fixed, and you will have a chance to do it on Saturday against the Crimson Tide. Give me that chain. Give me that chain. Last year, 11% of Miami plays, defensive plays, ended up in a tackle for a loss. I think you're going to see speedy linebackers getting through gaps. You've got John Ford, Nesta Silvera, uh, Jared Harrison up. Uh, Jared Harrison Hunt up front. I think we get more penetration. Got to keep Alabama under 200 yards. So rushing, give me that chain, no question. Okay, number two, rings or chains, it looks this way. Derrick King throws for two or more touchdowns or the defense forces two or more turnovers. Well, I'm going to go with Derrick King throws more than two, two touchdowns or more. He's had an electric off season. He's done a great job getting in tune with the receivers. Will Mallory is ready to explode onto the scene this year as the number one tight end in America and for sure in the ACC. So I think it's going to be two touchdowns or better through the air for D. Eric King and we'll get in the rings. Can I do both? Because I, if they get two turnovers or more on defense, they're going to win the game. So I think that both will happen. I think Derek King is going to throw two touchdowns in the game. And I think Bryce Young, being a young quarterback, is going to give Miami the ball twice. I think there will be one interception in one blindside strip sack. Let's take it. How about that? Give so, Joe sorry, the ring I'm and the chains. Ways. Yeah. All right, next one on rings or chains. The offense scores over 30 points, or the defense allows less than 30 points. 
simple for me. I'm going with <laughs> offense scores more than 30 points. Again, it goes back to De'Aaron King. You also have to look at the fact that Miami has so much experience on that offensive line, and I think that Charleston Rambo is going to make his presence felt in this game. We haven't talked about him a lot today. He had a great camp. He's a big, long, strong receiver. You have him with Harley and then Restrepo as well and throw in a guy named Smith, and you're going to see some points being scored. All right, I'm going to go with Miami scoring over 30 points. Give me the, uh, give me the rings. Give me the rings. And I, I look at it this way. Alabama, they've scored 35 or more in 26 of their last 27 games. So perhaps that streak also ends. And if you beat Alabama, the last two teams that beat Alabama had to go over 40. So Miami's going to win this game. And, of course, I think they're going to win every game. They go over 30. Yeah, and, I, and I'm with you, Joe. And you've got to put points on the board in today's college football. It doesn't matter who you're playing. It doesn't matter what the situation is. It's all about points, and it's all about plays that equal points. And Miami's going to come up with some big ones. What a great way to start the season. This would be a monumental victory for the University of Miami. For Manny Diaz and Don Bailey Jr., I'm Joe Zagacki. Thanks so much for joining us right here on the Manny Diaz Show. They cheer, they yell, they scream for the best moves. And the Miami Hurricanes are going to show you why they'll dominate the field this season. But for the best moves off the field, Good Greek Moving and Storage is the team you can rely on. We ensure a stress-free move on time and on budget, locally or nationwide. And now, Good Greek is the official mover of the Miami Hurricanes. Let Good Greek be your official mover, too. Good Greek Moving and Storage, your superhero movers. Experience a winning combination at Williamson Cadillac with a streamlined car buying experience and an unmatched lineup of Cadillacs. From the unmistakable crossover series to the performance of our sedans, plus the original icon, the Cadillac Escalade. Williamson is Miami.